I think it's just been a very technical process. I mean, in many ways, when you start looking at what's happening in country around red, when you look at the national policies, everything's caught up in these really technical things about how you set reference levels and uh, monitoring and, and verification programs and how all this works and different sources of data. And it's very complicated. I mean, it's not only women who are excluded, it's everybody from that kind of debate. It's just very hard to understand. Putting gender into that at that level, at the policy level, is probably not all that relevant. Where it becomes relevant is down when you're talking about benefit sharing, when you're talking about um, monitoring on the ground, if there's going to be a community level monitoring, things like that. And obviously when you're talking about actual, the, the, the actions and strategies being done to try to change forest use, then what are those actions, what are those changes, what are you asking people to do? Are you asking them to stop shifting cultivation? Are you asking them to produce in smaller areas, so then who are you affecting? Are you affecting the women's agriculture? Are you affecting men? Agriculture, you know, that's where it gets really complicated and definitely there has to be gendered questions asked at that level. So re gender is relevant at that level because any kinds of policies that come in and start changing your rules about land and forest use are as likely to affect women as they are to affect men. I mean, Again, it's going to depend very much on the division of labor in those communities, how different people are using the land, and so on. But if you don't ask the question, you're not going to know how those things are happening. So on the ground, um, there, there are many ways in which uh, women could be affected. So that's why it's so important for them to understand, to know, be informed about these processes from the beginning as informed as men. And in order for that to happen, that's, very, that's difficult because as one of the people asked here earlier, Women may spend, may spend, they said they do, but obviously depends on the community, four hours getting water every day or they're doing all the household labor. Of course they aren't as informed. And so you can't put the burden on women either to say, you know, okay, we have more things we need you to do. But in fact, you know, women do need to be informed. We need to know whether or not these policies or which ones of them are likely to have an impact on women. This research is still from the early RED projects. We've just done the second round of research on those same projects to look at two years later down the road how things are happening, but that, that data has not yet been analyzed. So it's just looking at the data from the, the early RED project initiatives and to what extent, um, well, what we ended up doing was having a women's focus group in order to understand some of the gender dimensions of um, forests in the communities. And then we also had village surveys, and they weren't comparable, so that's important to know. We didn't ask all the same questions to everybody, but the, so, some of the questions were the same, and one of those was assessing the extent to which uh, people were familiar with red, um, if they understood what it was, if they had a basic understanding of this thing that was happening in their community, whatever it was called, the project name or red or whatever. And we found a, a major difference, a significant difference between the, the the women, the percentage of women's groups that, under, that did have a basic understanding of red and the percent of this village focus groups. And the village groups were mixed gender, um, but they were about 60 to 66 to 67 percent male. So they were dom predominantly male across in, on average. And we found that 41 percent of the women's groups had a basic understanding of red, but 67 of the mixed groups did. I wasn't sure what we would really find, and it was somewhat surprising to find this difference across the boards. So it was sort of a, it was a proxy to say, okay, very early on, who's being informed? And then, but, but what we thought would be, we would find is that, well, where women are really active in their communities, they're probably pretty well informed. Or where women, um, you know, so our question, we have several questions, one about whether or not women are uh, involved in the leadership body, of the, if they have an elected position in the leadership body of the community. But the main one was really asking women if they feel they have an influence on village decisions. And the, the general percentages across the board were pretty high, but when you compared them to the results of knowledge about red, it didn't make any difference. There was no uh, correlation at all. And similarly, we thought, okay, well, there are probably places where women don't even use forests that much, right? That was one of our, our co-authors' arguments on this was, why should women be involved? They're not involved anyway. They don't do anything in forests. So we looked at that data to see how much women used forests, um, but we found that even in the places where women, women and men's use of the forest appeared to be equal in terms of the amount of time they spend in the forest or um, 
where women used the force more than men, you still didn't see a difference in terms of that gap between knowledge about, on knowledge about red. So clearly these are women you would expect to have a vested interest in forests and yet you don't see them being equally informed as the men in their own communities. So really the only place where it made a difference was where women, we specifically asked women if they were involved in forest rulemaking. And that is the place where we found that in fact um, women were more likely to have a, a similar knowledge to men or the, the gap was less. Well, if, these, if something like RED is going to happen, and you already see many projects happening around the world that are called RED and some that haven't, you know, have changed their names now, but there are interventions in communities that are going to affect how people can use forest resources, we have to look at how, at vulnerability, if we don't take a gendered approach, we're likely to do more harm than good for women. I mean, my, uh, my closing statement was that if uh, if you don't address the inequities and you go in with the project, you're going to come out with inequities. You know, you have to, you're just going to perpetuate them, if not make them worse, unless you take them into account at the beginning and design them into your project.